Thank you very much, Cam. It's good to be here. Thanks to everybody at Trading Pub, and thanks to all of you for being here. I am Bob Iacchino. Mike Arnold is here as well. I'm assuming you guys can hear me because I'm not seeing anyone type in, I can't hear him. So if you guys can just type another bunch of whys, I'd appreciate it just to make sure I'm coming through loud and clear. All right, that's what we want to see. What is what we want to see? So let me just make sure I get a handle on how to work this. And you guys see my slides advancing right now from the title slide to the risk statement. Just don't want to begin without. All right, good. So let's do this. Let's talk about buy high and sell higher really quick before I actually get into the meat of the presentation. There's a lot of trading myths out there, and one of my favorites is buy low, sell high. You hear that a lot, especially when you begin as a trader. You'll tell people that while well, you're starting to trade, and they'll all kind of smile and go, buy low, sell high, right? And the truth of the matter is, yeah, that would be great. But as Cam mentioned, I've been doing this for about 24 years. Mike's been doing it for about 25 years. And I could probably count on two hands. I would actually say maybe one hand. The amount of times I've bought the low and sold the high. Or did the exact same transaction in reverse. And what you really want to do as a trader, okay, not as an investor, but as a trader, is you want to buy sections of moves or sell sections of moves. You don't want to be that person who sees the low made and then you buy it 10 ticks higher or $10 higher or whatever it is and say, wow, I should have waited and bought it a little bit lower. Or the person that takes a profit on a trade, as long as you plan that particular profit out and you take the profit that you planned on making and then you watch the trade continue to go in your direction and you think, ah, oh, I should have held it. I would have made more. That's really a critical error made by a lot of new and novice traders. And it's, it's brought upon by greed. So we put this presentation together using um, a strategy that Mike actually brought to the party when Mike and I became partners, something that he actually taught me. And we call it the R zone. So before I get into it, I'd like to first read a quick risk statement because we actually take this very seriously. This is not just um, cover your butt kind of stuff. This stuff actually matters. This presentation is for information purposes only and does not constitute investment advice, nor an offer, solicitation, or recommendation to acquire or dispose of any investment or to engage in any other transaction. This presentation is not intended for solicitation purposes, but only for use as general information. All descriptions, examples, and calculations contained in this publication are for illustrative purposes only. The risk of loss in trading can be substantial. This is very important. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Very critical points. Number one, it's kind of funny that it says this presentation is not intended for solicitation purposes because we will have a special offer for you at the end of this presentation. But what this actually means is we're not trying to get your brokerage account. Mike and I are not. We're not trying to get you to invest money with us in any way, shape, or form. And the carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you essentially means don't risk more than you can afford to lose. Because even in the highest probability strategies, if you have a strategy that wins 80% of the time and you risk too much during that 20% losing window, the strategy doesn't matter because you didn't trade it correctly. So enough of that. Let's get into some of the meat of who we are. I'm going to put this all up at once. But essentially what Path Trading Partners is, is a trading and education firm. We do have our own prop, proprietary trading relationships. And we do actually seed international traders um, with, fund, with funding capital. But we're not high frequency traders and we're not day traders. The last line is really the most important one. We believe in long-term trading success covering timeframes dictated to us by products, markets, and price action. What we mean by that is we don't come in and say, I want to trade the Euro US dollar for 10 ticks today, and then I want to go to the beach. We don't do that. We let the market give us what it's going to give us, and we take it, and we take it without guilt. But we don't try and impose our will upon the market. We don't try to dictate what's going to happen in trading, very much like the sports analogy. You take what the defense gives you. We take what the market gives us. We don't try and dictate upon the market. That's really the most important part. This kind of trading is achieved by following the correct path, and that's where we got our name from, essentially. So I'm going to skip over our bios 
because Cam did a really good job of introducing us, and I really appreciate that, Cam. But essentially, there's Mike, and then I'll put mine up real quick, and you guys can go look at the recording if you want to read through these. But again, Cam did a really good job. Let's get into what we were going to talk about. So what is the R zone that you saw at the beginning of this presentation? Well, price does not travel in a straight line. It forms a series of waves or rotations. And we call areas where rotations are likely to happen the rotation zone or the R zone for short. That's essentially what the R zone is. Now, you'll hear people say all the time, that market went straight up or that market went straight down. That's not the case. Okay, here you see a really good example of a market that most people would say from this particular point here to this point here that it pretty much went straight up. Okay. Well, the truth is that it didn't. Okay. It formed series of waves and rotation that I'm sure a lot of you have seen as you've been watching markets. Okay. And every time it's done a move like this and then went back to where it was or a little higher, you probably thought I should have gotten in. That's where I should have gotten in. Well, how do you pinpoint those spots? How do you pick spots to do that? This is one of my favorite examples because right here you've got an example of one of the most straight down markets that people have seen in years. This is crude oil. And this is crude oil from July of 2014 till a few weeks ago. Okay, and essentially people will tell you that crude oil went down in a straight line. Oh, the bear market in crude oil was brutal. It went down in a straight line. Well, actually it rotated up right in this point. Then it rotated up again in this point, and then again here, and then again here. And it had a pretty good down move, and it made a slight rotation here. Then it made a pretty good rotation right there. Then it made another one there until it eventually made the last one where the low of crude oil was made at about 26.05. Um, if you notice in this particular chart, again, one of the markets where people would say crude oil went straight down, there was no opportunity to get short. Not true. We're pointing out eight opportunities right here just on this little section of chart. And this is a longer term chart. So if you go on a shorter term chart, you'll see more rotations. But this is just an example of price not moving in a straight line as much as you may hear, see, or think that it did. So the important part is figuring out where do our zones occur? Where are they likely to turn up where you can take advantage of? Well, there's a few major areas where our zones tend to occur. They return to retest broken trend lines. It's a very good area of R zone activity. Near breakouts or breakdown levels formed from sideways channels. Near prior areas of consolidation. And between key moving averages and near major Fibonacci or GAN levels. Right? So that's a lot of information, right? We don't expect you to put all these things on your chart, but we're going to show you some examples of a few of these. So there's two major categories of R zones before we show these examples. There's the static R zone, which is an R zone that doesn't move, hence the name. It's in the same place. It's at the same price. And then there's dynamic R zones. Those are R zones that are based on moving targets. So going through the first example, here was a major trend line. This actual price action taken in place in our presentation. Here was a major trend line. Okay, The trend line broke right here, and it came back up and retested the trend line. And then it came back up again and retested the trend line. This whole area where the trend line is, and even further going up to the right, is all considered to be a rotation zone or an R zone. If you missed it on this part, if you missed this move because you didn't want to sell at the break of the trend line, you had an opportunity to sell here, then you had another opportunity to sell here. And one of the trend line strategies that Mike and I employ, we also call this kissing the trend line goodbye, where a trend line is broken and you get an opportunity to get short or long if it were. Uh, downward sloping trend line, you get an opportunity to actually play the break of the trend line and the potential new trend when the market comes up and kisses the trend line goodbye. A breakout from a sideways channel. This would be the price action that would make up the sideways channel. Okay, you'd have a lower channel line here and then the upper channel area here. Here's the breakout from congestion, closes above, huge move to the upside, and then a slow trickle back down to where? a static R zone or an R zone that isn't moving. This particular area would represent a static R zone because it would always exist at the same price. So similar to the trend line, except on the long side, you get a breakout above and you think, I missed it. I needed to jump in. A lot of people will get in here and then they'll get spooked out as it comes back down because maybe they've exceeded that risk that we talked about in the risk statement. 
right? They put on too many here. What I'll do in a lot of these cases, I'll put on part of my trade there in case it doesn't rotate, and then the rest of it if it does. But this is the R zone from the breakout of a sideways channel. Prior areas of consolidation. Again, you've got a breakout up from essentially what was a consolidation pattern. It's not quite a channel because there's a lot of activity there. And here is a test, a test, a test, and a breakout. And then again, a move back down to a prior area of consolidation. This particular line is not actually, it's a little mismarked here. It's not a, a line that represents a prior area of consolidation. This is a significant level. And significant level is something that um, we created and we teach, and it's actually something that's going to be in the offer we show you at the end. But this was a long-term significant level, and this is another area where price will rotate. And it is a static R zone. It's a significant level brought on by a lot of emotional movement to the left that you can't see on this chart. But this upper level here is another area where you see this consolidation in this area here, broke down, came right back up into this consolidation area. And then as the market runs, what does it do? It pulls back to this uh, lower end of this consolidation band. And then when it breaks above the upper one, it pulls back again to the upper area of this consolidation band. Remember the crude oil chart that we saw on the way down, okay? We saw a lot of pullbacks to prior areas of small consolidation that were off to the other side of the chart. R zone between key moving averages. Here we have a dynamic R zone, okay? A moving R zone. We've got a slow moving, uh, moving average and we've got a faster moving moving average okay and here you see these rotations this looks very similar to the crude oil chart we showed you get a breakdown this would be a static R zone here because here's some a prior area of congestion and then you get a mix you get to move up into the moving averages and then a move lower and then another rotation here another rotation there another one up on top here goes down for a bit and another one right there goes down for a bit, another one right there. You get another small one here. It doesn't necessarily continue. It actually breaks out up. But then you get a double cross of the moving average. One of the problems I'm sure you know at this point, but if you don't, you'll learn it over time, is moving average crossover systems don't work really well because they end up being after the fact. But the actual R zones created by certain moving averages work extremely well. And this is something that Mike and I trade combined with a couple of other things daily, is this these R zones created by moving averages. You've got another rotation there, another one here, then another one here, and another one here, and another one here. Again, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve opportunities to get a part of this move, a piece of this move. Not the whole thing. You know, we're not trying to sell the high and buy the low. Okay, we're trying to sell low and buy lower. Or in the case of an upside move, buy high and then sell higher. I'm going to turn it over to Mike here now for the combining our zone sections of this, and I'll be back in a little bit. Great. Thanks, Bob. Can everybody hear me? Am I coming through? Oh, okay. All right. So Bob just went over the basics of the R zones and the sort of static and dynamic and some just just looking at them really separate. And he alluded to an aspect that you can a lot of times see on the charts, areas where there might be a dynamic and a static one lining up. So let's, ex let's explore that a little more. Let's see. Okay. Any of the prior mentioned areas can lead to good rotation setups by themselves. So what Bob has already covered, you could just use on your own. Okay. But there's a more powerful way to do it. These, however, can also fall into just simple support and resistance types of entries. Our research has shown us that these vanilla entries are not good enough for risk conscious traders. We want, really want to get the probabilities in our favor. So some of the highest probability setups come from combining two or more different R zones. That's really where we're going with this. You have R zones that fall in the static category, R zones that fall in the dynamic category, and when you can link them together, then we'll also show you how you can do it with multi time frames, which is a very popular a very powerful concept and you putting all these things together increases the probabilities of your trade because you're identifying multiple areas where a rotation could occur 
So, we can combine any of the following four R zone areas. We can look for them near breakout or breakdown levels of sideways channels. We can look at, as Bob showed you, return to retest broken trend lines or kissing the trend line goodbye. Very powerful strategy. Near prior areas of consolidation. Near major Fibonacci or GAN levels. So, with the dynamic we can take those static and those are all really static why because they're not going to move all right prior areas of consolidation are already fixed in in the sand sort of they're there because that's past price history the trend line was drawn you know and it's already been confirmed and then it's been broken it's going to retest it you're not just going to move that trend line the moment it's broken breakout breakdown level sideways channels you know, that's based off past price. Fibonacci and GAN levels. Yes, you'll redraw them eventually, but let's say you have a big long-term move up and now you've, you've identified the major swing low, the major swing high, or a major low and a major high, and you've drawn your Fibonacci or GAN levels on them. Now, those are going to be static until it makes a new major low or a new major high. And then you're going to combine it with the R zone entries, which is going to move as price unfolds. So let's take an example of combining two of them. All right, here we have prior, you could call it prior support. We'd have this static area, and we like to identify these static areas, not just a lot of people just look for the highs. We also look for these key closes and opens. So if you see, we have a key high here, but we also have a key close here. We have a key high here. That sort of gives us a zone. Many times when people look at support and resistance or these prior breakout or breakdown zones, they just identify it as one level. They just look, draw one line, like it's a support or resistance line. We tend to look at it as support and resistance zones because you don't know exactly where it's going to stop. So on this chart, I've drawn you know, we've had this high over here at the left. Let me identify, let me show you with my pointer. Draw some things on here. So we have this high lining up with this key close, and we have this really emotional candle, which is open, moving away from it. It also is right there. So we've, we've identified the zone. This high falls into this zone. This close is actually at the top of the zone, and this is before it's even broken out. Then it breaks out, okay? And we come back and we retest in the rotation area. We actually have a test here and a test here. Now let me erase some of this. We also have this dynamic channel formed by our shorter and our longer moving average. So these are dynamically moving. Each day as more data comes, you know, your moving averages are updated. So, we come back, we retest in this zone right here. It's also in the dynamic moving average zone. We retest here again. This gave two really nice potential entries to get long after this breakout. One of the things from these breakouts, many times you'll see markets break out and then retest where resistance became support. Now we have a confirmation, not only from the zone here, but also this dynamic moving average zone. So we've combined two things which have increased the probabilities of our trade. Let's look at the same concept, but with kissing the trend line goodbye, or the trend line is another static R zone. It's on this chart. We break down from it, possibly triggering a short trade. It comes back up and not only touches this trend line here, but re-enters this dynamic rotation zone, which is also a, the moving zone providing resistance. It does it there, comes down again, goes back up, and retests not only the trend line here, but the moving rotation zone, giving, again, two opportunities to get short by combining a static and dynamic rotation zone concept. Here's some congestion areas, and some of these might be significant levels, like Bob mentioned before, where there's a lot of significance. So we're going to look at these levels. So it, the trade, it's already broken down. We have the first cross the moving average. You know, there was consolidation all the way up here. 
gets down there, breaks out, comes back, returns returns to this level, which you know you can see all these. This level has been tested before into the dynamic area, gives you an opportunity to get short, breaks down again. We have another key level here. It was major resistance here. It became support. Yeah, it was broken here, but it then held. It held here. It broke through, came back up, testing it. This was support becoming resistance, and you have the dynamic R zone heading down. So that was another area, another potential area to get short. We come back down here. This, we had prior resistance, prior resistance, tested the support here, tested the support here, break down through it, coming back up, retesting that support becoming resistance, and just barely touching the rotation zone. So looking at something in here as a potential area to get short again. Let's look at some ways we can enter the trades in the R zone. So there are two major types of entries in the R zone. An aggressive entry is done by placing a limit order near the confluence area of the price action, R zone, and the faster moving average. This is aggressive because we're not waiting for any, comp any confirmation. We're just saying, hey, we're going to try to get this near that faster moving average and buy that other prior either resistance coming support or near that trend, kissing the trend line goodbye, or it could be near a Fibonacci or GAN level. We're going to just put our order there. And, you know, we're going to count on that R zone holding. The conservative entry is to identify the R zone area from the price action combined with the zone between the faster and slower moving averages and wait for a move back in the direction opposite of the R zone. So now we're identifying a wider area and we're also going to wait for price to rotate back in the direction of our trade. So let's really take a look at some of these conservative entry methods because those are the best things for traders to start with, especially when learning these concepts. There are many different conservative entry methods which you may want to explore. These entries can be done on the time frame of the R zone or a lower time frame. And it's really, this is a really powerful concept of multi time frame analysis, which is something we really believe in, which is using more than one time frame. You might have a setup time frame or a longer term time frame and then a well, shorter term time frame to trigger your entry. And I'll show you a couple slides on that coming up. So it'll help clarify that. For example, when an R zone is formed on a daily chart, the four hour chart can often be used for entries. Or when an R zone is formed on the four hour chart, a one hour chart can be used for entries. Another little tip I'll give you uh, and it's a concept we teach. We like uh, time frames separated by a factor of about three to four. So, for example, if I'm if my major chart, let's say I'm a really short term trader, trader, I might use a 15 minute and a five minute separated by three. Or I could use a 10 and a 30. Or I could use a 15 and an hour. Or I could use an hour and a four hour, et cetera, et cetera something like that. That's how we found the best multi time frames to really put together to optimize it. If you get much closer than that, your trades overlap, your charts overlap too much, and you really can't get the bigger picture. If you get too far away, you're you're looking. Let's say I'm looking at an hour chart and a five minute chart. There's too big a degree of separation. We found that's a little tip I want to give you guys. So let's look at, again. Let's keep looking at these conservative entry methods. Drawing a trend line on price action entering the R zone and waiting for a break of the trend line. That's one way we could use it for price turning back up. I'll give you an example of that with a chart. There's another thing. If there's a small candle body in the R zone, waiting for a move above or below that candle body. A small candle body, we use candlestick charts, means there's like some consolidation. Price is sort of pausing, and if it pauses, in that key R zone, the static and dynamic R zone area, and then price pauses and then turns it back up into the longer term direction and breaks above that small candle, really good entry. Really easy entry and a really good entry. Utilizing traditional chart patterns to enter the trade in the R zone.
So what I mean, hold on. What I mean by traditional chart patterns enter trading the art zone, like they could be double tops or double bottoms, maybe on a shorter term time frame. So let's say I'm watching an art zone on an hour chart and it enters. We pull back. Let's I'm looking at short. We pull back and I might on my 15 minute chart form a double top in that area I've identified. Well, that's the kind of thing where it would be a traditional chart pattern. All right, entering on a trend line break. Now, this is just using a single time frame. So we've identified prices trending up. We've identified this pot. You can't see, but this line shows a prior support area on the chart. It comes back down. It comes into this. We draw a trend line on this. It comes into the static and dynamic area. We wait for price to turn back up and close back above this trend line as an entry to get long. That's just using it on a single time frame. All right. Let's say we were going to use that same concept on a lower time frame. So this is this is the higher time frame. This is the same chart, the same area identified on a lower time frame. So now we've identified it on the higher time frame. And now we're going to fine tune our entry using a a trend line on a lower time frame okay we've identified the area so the r zone on this time frame the dynamic one with the moving averages is not the same as the one on the higher time frame because these they're the same moving averages but they're not going to look the same because these it's a shorter time frame so this one we have our trend line drawn on our shorter time frame and now we're waiting for it to break back up we've identified where the our zone is on a higher time frame. This orange box is the same orange box as here. So we've seen it enter that on the higher time frame. Time frame. We can go down to our lower time frame, and we can wait for it to turn back up. And we've drawn our trend line on the lower time frame, and now it turns back up. We get a close above the trend line, and we initiate our long-term trade. Here's another one. We have a static R zone area identified by these two lines. Okay, well, remember, we don't just use highs and lows. We use candle bodies also to identify. And this was major prior resistance. Prior resistance breaks above there. So we're looking for it to come back into this area for potential support. It moves down. We have this small candle body in this prior area of support and in the dynamic R zones. So we see that and we wait for the move to break above. You could use the high of that candle and break above there to initiate your trade. That's how you could use that small candle body concept in that because you have identified this high probability area, not only with the moving averages in the dynamic R zone, but that static R zone concept. Let's take another look. Here we have that area on the daily chart, but let's say you're also going to use it on a shorter time frame to fine tune your entry using that multi time frame analysis that I've covered. Well, here's the shorter time frame. Now, this would be the four hour time frame. We see here's the R zone identified from that higher area chart. It comes down and we form a traditional double bottom pattern. We have our first bottom, our second bottom, and our peak. That formed another reversal pattern on a shorter term chart in the higher time frame rotation zone. So we wait for the move above the peak. It comes out of that rotation zone on the higher time frame, and that helps us initiate the trade and we could, use, we could use multiple targets for this, too. We could use a first target of the double bottom target, traditional double bottom target, which is a measured move target. And that's identified here. So maybe we're entering multiple positions. We can take some off here and then hold it for the larger term target. Or we could go back and roll it into a higher time frame target. And you can also see the targets identified on these higher time frames from these lower time frames. So those are a way you can combine those concepts together. 
all right, a lot of people then, all right, I get my trade. What do I do with my stop? How do I actually make this work? Where would I place a stop? Well, we're going to, initially when you're learning this, we teach to put the stop goes beyond the slower moving average and recent significant price action. Okay? We want it because we want it on the other side of the R zone. We don't know where this is going to stop. We've identified a key stopping place. Like, let's say we get short here. Let's say we were looking for an R zone just on this time frame. We drew a trend line, breaks below the trend line. That initiates the short. We don't just want our stop right above here where most people put it. We want it fully outside the R zone, and we want to look for other significant price action. Well, coming up here, we see this is pretty significant right here. So if we put it right above this level, we're getting it above this price action, and it's completely above this moving average. So if price were to return, we showed you another few examples earlier where you saw price enter the R zone a couple times. That's why we don't want to crowd our stop. We want to get it on the other side of the rotation zone. Should This one didn't. This one just kept going. But should it have gone down, re-entered, if we get too cute with our stop, we could get taken out before you know, our trade has room to unfold. So does the R zone apply to all markets? Yes, it does. It works in stocks. It works in foreign exchange. It works in futures it doesn't matter here's gold futures so this was actually a triangle pattern but you have it this upper one is a trend line it broke above here and it came back down to kiss the trend line goodbye and it was caught in the dynamic r zone you had two things lining up you could even draw on a shorter term trend line right down here waited for it to rotate back up get above that trend line to trigger your long entry and then it keeps going Turn this back over to Bob a bit, and then we'll answer some questions. Thank you, Michael. In conclusion, combining traditional price action with moving averages can produce high probability entry zones from which to initiate trades. This is not simply using prior support and resistance to trigger trades. It's utilizing the convergence of pure price area zones with dynamic uh, price zones to create high probability entries with concrete stop levels. That's really what we're looking to try and achieve there. We're not looking to, this is not an entire strategy encapsulated in one 30 minute presentation. And that's what, having traded as long as Mike and I both have, that's one of the things that's always bothered us about educating it all. And it's something that we've been, in our opinions, extremely responsible about. We never necessarily say, Okay, now learn this one strategy and you're done. And that's it. And you're going to win 80% of the time and you can risk X amount per trade. There are too many different situations that have to be covered in order for people to become successful traders. And you all have the ability to achieve it on different levels. Now, when you talk about things like Nadex binaries or Nadex spreads and taking a particular strategy like this and imparting it into those markets, Right, you look at a situation where you're looking at a spread. Let's just say it's a uh, 1900 to 1940 Nadex spread, okay? And you see the market, the underlying is trading at about 1920, about two hours to expiration. This is just a random example, okay? And you see it go into an R zone, which comes close to the lower end of that spread. Volatility is not spiking tremendously. You know that you have a better chance of getting that at a lower price if you get a rotation into an R zone and you have a good probability of it coming back, depending on which market it is, what time frame chart you're looking at, and which moving averages you've put on those combined with the expiration. There's a lot that goes into it, and that's why we just use a blanket term like high probability, for example. Here's pretty much everywhere you can find us. One of, the, one of my favorite things is the podcast we do called the Money Path Podcast, where we talk about a lot of things other than just um, binaries and spreads and FX and other markets. We talk about pretty much everything market related. And again, we have close to 50 years experience between the two of us in several different 
jobs. So visit us there. Visit, visit us at our website. We're happy to take some questions now. If you've got any, I see Joe's got one. Most of what you see here, Joe, Joe says what moving averages are using. Most of what you're seeing there are the 8 and the 21 exponential. Most of the charts. There's some different ones, depending on what market it was and what time frame it was. But most of the examples we showed you was the 8 exponential and the 21 exponential. Do you have any examples of a Nadex R zone? Okay, Joel, that's a great question. Um, do you have any Nadex examples of an R zone? We actually do on our site, believe it or not. We have a couple of um, videos that are available that showed how we took particular trades. One was based off an R zone and one was based off of the doubles. But again, essentially what you're talking about is charting things. You could use the Nadex chart, so you can use any other platform that you're currently using. And what you're looking for is price action of the underlying to line up with a binary or a spread that you're looking at. So to actually chart it on an R zone isn't technically correct. What you're looking at is having an underlying strategy and then imparting the direction and the levels that you think inside of a binary or spread trade. And Bob, do you usually uh, trade uh, in the money, at the money, or out of the money binaries? That's a great question, Cam. We actually have a bunch of free presentations that you can see on our site or on the Nadex site where we talk about the different times to do those particular things. Um, it's actually Mike's expertise, but what you're looking at is in the money, at the money, or out of the money, All there's there's good times to trade each and every one of those. So we trade all of them. And it all depends on the like, time to expiration, uh, implied volatility conditions, because, there, again, if in rising volatility, certain areas are better to put them on. and falling volatility, it's better to use different ideas. The length of your trade, how long do you expect it to get? Is there high momentum or... Are the markets moving very slowly that's all going to play into which if you're choosing a binary where you want to put it in out of the money in the money or at the money or if you're using a spread where you want to put it on let's say i'm going long a spread do i want to put it on near the floor price near the midpoint price which we call the null point which is about halfway through the spread or maybe closer to the ceiling price if we want to time try to capture time decay and use it in our favor Excellent. That was we really well in, explained. We talk in detail, uh, again, on those free webinars that we did for Nadex. You can find them on Path Trading Partners, or you can find them in the Nadex archives. Um, we talk at length about the different places, like, for example, the null point um, for Nadex spreads, the way the Greeks apply to the binaries. One thing people have to understand when they're looking at Nadex products is you are trading options. You're trading one of the best possible versions of options for beginners and novices that you can get because they're just so simple and easy to understand. And in the case of the spreads, you're talking about vertical, um, vertical credit spreads, I'm sorry, debit spreads, vertical debit spreads that are created for you. You don't have to take the time to pick the two uh, calls you're gonna trade or the two puts you're gonna trade. So they're very, very good products for this, but they are options. So you do need to understand those things. Are the Greeks as relevant for Nadex as they are for a weekly options? I think they're very relevant because of the way you, because people a lot of times don't have to, un, don't necessarily understand how their, either their binary or their spread is going to move in relation to the underlying, how the delta, which is delta for anybody who doesn't know right now, is the rate of change of an options price as related to the underlying. An options price, it's not a linear one for one. For example, a deep out of the money, the delta is going to be very low, meaning the option is not going to move much if based off the underlying. In the money, it can get higher. Well, spreads, since you're combining uh, a long and a short option, there are nuances to the delta. And once people learn how their spread's going to move in relationship to the underlying and based off where they put on the spread, they really have a whole nother in-depth look at how they can fine-tune their choice of spreads to match these kind of strategy they're trading. And it's not the kind of thing that uh, you guys should get stressed about in terms of why well, I don't understand the Greeks. Um, the Greeks are 
they're easy to understand that you think they do take some work, but it's more about understanding the way the Greeks affect the particular option you're going to trade at that time than knowing exactly where the delta is or knowing exactly the level of theta. Or It really is more about understanding what the Greeks are going to do to the trade that you're in given the current circumstances. Let me try and cover Charles. The trend line combined with MA slide. So let me go back to that, Charles. All right. When you say the first one would stop out, that's not necessarily true. Because if you remember the stop slide, okay, where we said we would want to get it above not only the moving average, okay, and that's assuming that the entry was here, but that's okay. We can assume that the entry was here. That's fine. It's getting it above the static and the dynamic R zone. And if you remember, the dynamic R zone is also areas of congestion. I don't want that. Hang on, let me get the pen. Areas of congestion. So what we do, is this me doing this? I don't want to do that either. Hold on. Why can't I why can't I get this to work? There we go. All right. If I draw a dynamic R zone here, for example, I'm sorry, a static R zone here. Okay. Depending on what we did on the lower time frame, all right, we may not have even entered here. But if we did enter here, my stop would be above the static R zone here as well. Now it also is possible that it stopped us out. But you have to remember one thing, is one of the things that we, again, it would have stopped out above the slower MA. That isn't necessarily where your stop is. First of all, you have to think that it's above. So how far above? Well, if I'm looking for an area above here, the next thing I'm doing is I'm not being random about where it's going. Okay, I'm saying, okay, I want it above the R zone. So where above? Well, let me find the next level above. For me, that would have been the static R zone here. So it would have been, for me, somewhere up in here. But also, it is possible that you get stopped out. I mean, if you think about it from that perspective, in some of the trading strategies that we employ, we get high 60% in terms of winners to losers. That still leaves low 40% for stop outs and for losses. Right? Always remember that. When people tend to show examples when they're giving trading webinars, and they tend to show only the winning situations, and I'm here to tell you that that's... It needs to be the majority of your situations, but it is not every situation. It's one of the biggest problems traders have. If you're watching a presentation or you're looking at a presentation and thinking, hopefully these guys show me the one thing that never loses, I would advise you as a friend to give up trading. And I'm not speaking specifically to Charles here. But when we place our stop, if you notice on that stop slide that Mike showed you, he says he would get it above the R zone. He was only pointing to the one R zone. Okay, and again, it depends on where the entry was. Hopefully that answers your question. It is possible that that second one would have stopped you out, yes. Hey, Bob, can you tell me a little bit about the two courses you're offering? Sure. We are offering uh, our most popular course is called Doubles. And if you stop at that slide right there, Mike, if you go back just one, Mike pointed out a uh, double bottom on the prior slide there. Double bottoms are very misunderstood price patterns. Um, they're overly quoted. You hear them on TV. Um, and I'm one of the guys on TV, and I'm here to tell you you shouldn't listen to those guys. They're pointed out a lot, and they're pointed out incorrectly. Okay, They were discovered or invented years and years ago, and they became sort of bastardized by people who think that a double bottom is just a pattern with two bottoms, or a double top is just a pattern that has two swing highs. And that's not the case. There's actually a specific set of circumstances that shows you when double bottoms are higher probability, meaning higher than 50%, or are just an instance of two lows, and vice versa for the tops. So our doubles course has a specific set of rules to enter the trades or to skip the trades. A lot of the time, it's more important for people to learn which patterns they should skip. 
which ones are not up to par in terms of probability, meaning again, greater than 50% of the time they reach their target. Okay, so that's the double scores. And we've combined that with the significant level scores. And the reason we did that is essentially if you buy the top shelf trader bundle, you're, buy, you're getting the significant level scores for free. And we combine the two because significant levels is something that you can add into whatever strategy you're trading. Doubles is a strategy in and of itself that you can affect the trades. And we have a video example of trading a doubles pattern uh, on Nadex binaries. So we have a video example built into the course where we show you how we would have traded a particular double once you get through all the rules. And it's shown in a binary example. And then we combine that with our significant level scores. And the significant level scores you can put into anything you're, any particular strategy you're trading right now. Because all it does is it takes support and resistance to a, a higher level. Okay, I'll give you a, a weird example. In the US justice system, there's beyond a reasonable doubt, and then there's a preponderance of the evidence. Beyond a reasonable doubt is a higher standard. Significant levels are a higher standard of support and resistance. And almost at 100% level, we've had people learn significant levels and come back to us and say, it's amazing how well these things work. Now, work is relative. You might use them for stops. You might uh, enter trades that break the significant levels. Uh, you might lose them and use them as a place to add more to your trade. Use them however you want. They can be incorporated in any strategy that you're currently trading. So that's the two we've combined. The two bought separately would be about $450, and we've taken $150 off that, essentially giving you the significant levels course for nothing. By the way, we don't do discounts. That's not something we do. Uh, we don't have a landing page. We don't, we don't do that kind of stuff. We actually have traders to manage and, and our own trades to do. And we've been doing this for a long time, and it started off as just sort of something we enjoyed. Um, so the, you're not, <laughs> this, you guys probably hear this kind of thing all the time. You're not going to see discounts from us. We just don't do it. But um, Cam and the guys at Trading Pub were nice enough to bring us on. We're, we're very small from a perspective of who we educate. We don't educate a lot of people. We don't really care to. Um, so it was just very nice of them to bring us on to this sort of larger stage that we generally don't visit very often. So I would hope a bunch of you would take advantage of this. Well, great. Do we have any other questions? Anyone? Well, Bob and Mike, I want to thank you for coming to the Trading Pub today. Uh, I thought it was an excellent presentation, and I really enjoyed your analysis of um, how to identify rotational moves in the market. Your special offer is excellent. I mean, that's $150 off two quarters. It's like a two-for-one, isn't it? That's essentially what it is, yeah. Excellent. Hey, by the way, you got some press recently on the uh, news networks about uh, – your Nostradamus-like predictions with oil. Did you use your technical <laughs> analysis to do that? It's funny you ask that question because that is exactly what happens. What I do when I go on TV, and I'm on CNBC tomorrow, um, they essentially asked me to come on for a victory lap, to be honest. So you'll see me on Futures Now. I'm not sure if I'm going to be on the network or if I'm going to be on the web show. I don't know. But as CNBC Futures Now tomorrow, we'll be talking about oil again. I, Mike and I get together, we do our charts, and then we decide what we think is going to happen based off of the charts. And then I go on TV, and before I go on TV, I look for a reason in the news that that would happen. And that's what I tell them. And that's the truth. People, you know, they say all the time, how did you know that it would happen in Saudi Arabia? Well, I really didn't. It's just our charts told us that it would, was probably going to go up, so I'm going to find a reason fundamentally why it might. And that's what I say on TV. So everything you guys hear me say on TV is based off of something that Mike and I are seeing on the charts. That's excellent. Do we have any uh, final questions from anyone? We still have a few minutes left. Is there anything else you wanted to share, um, Bob or Mike? No, I'd really love it if you guys would go on iTunes and subscribe to our podcast because I really enjoy doing it. Um, we've got a decent amount of subscribers at this point. It's called The Money Path. Um, and then definitely uh, check out all of, of Top Shelf Trader because that thing is really good. I've actually been spending a lot of time reading through that. So, And then I just want to thank you guys again for, for listening and, and Cam, you guys at Trading Pub for allowing us to be here. Well, excellent. Yes. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Mike and, and Bob, 
Uh, once again, I thought it was a great presentation, and we look forward to having you back in the future. And uh, for everyone that showed up, thank you so much for spending an hour with us at the Trading Pub. And with that, I'm going to bid you all good night. Thank you very much.